Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tad Pog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games, it has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadbog Podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys talk about old games. It's Original Flavor Wednesday. That's right. I had to think about it. It's Original Flavor Wednesday, so that means we are... Playing down through Digital Trend's top 25 Sega Genesis games. This week, we're playing... I forget what number it is. 18. 18? This is 18. 18, Toe Jam and Earl. Yes. I feel like this is a long-awaited episode. Yeah. People have asked us to play this game, and I've... Until to... Well, not today. Until this game. Until we've played this game, I'd never so much as seen a screenshot. Really? Or any, I had no idea what kind of game Toe Jam & Earl was. Yeah, I mean, I think I had seen screenshots and gameplay. I had, I, up until I had watched um, Paul Ruby Bear and Paul Kluwell's uh, playthrough of mm. Toe Jam & Earl, I really didn't know anything about it. Other than I knew that kids went crazy about it when i was 10 <laughs> and i didn't have a sega genesis yeah and i had that friend of course who had the sega genesis but all he had was like every madden game you could possibly buy on the genesis and sonic the hedgehog 2 a waste what a waste that was a good console for sports games yeah. so i mean if you're into that kind of thing i feel like that was that was the console <laughs> to get and he was definitely into that yeah I mean, that was his yeah that was his bag mm. Before we get to all that, I'm your beard host, Tyler, and, and Dave. Yes. Sometimes on this show, yeah, we like to try new kinds of garbage food. We do. Yeah. Can we can we do this garbage Let's food first? Let's do that first. Because right. it is going to be It's cold. heat sensitive. This is actually, I want to thank, I want to pull out these. And I say these because you're right. I bought two full <laughs> oh, Whopperitos. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, this is my dinner. Uh, <laughs> and I'll eat whatever you don't finish. Too. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know that these things. Okay, so this is a Whopperito, mm -hmm. which from uh, my cursory research on the internet is essentially a Whopper just in a tortilla <laughs> shell. <laughs> like that's like I don't think they even like did anything different. I think all it is is like the Whopper without a bun, and it's a Whopper wrap, <laughs> essentially. Um, I want to thank uh, Paul Anderson for mentioning this on the Tadpog Facebook page. <laughs> Um, because I didn't know this was a thing until yeah, he mentioned it today. <laughs> and I was like, well, there's our intro for sure. <laughs> and then, of course, as we'll see later, Tyler, you had you also had a snack idea. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Although this thing I'm holding in my hands, this Whopperito, mm -hmm. this is not a snack. <laughs> this is a big fucking... Yeah, this is a meal. This is a meal. <laughs> All right, tear into this Whopperito. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat it all. I mean... It does. It tastes like a Whopper and a tortilla. There's pickles in it, which is weird. Mm -hmm. I never really expected to eat a burrito with pickles. <laughs> There's not even like nacho cheese or anything. No, it's just nothing. A regular, it's just a regular Whopper in a tortilla. Yeah, it's a hamburger. It's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah, you think that they should naturally spring for the cheese. Mm -hmm. But you think this would be cheaper than a Whopper? Because I'm sure it was cheaper to make. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Well, they got our number. They're like, people fucking buy anything. Oh, yeah. No, that's definitely what they're thinking. They're like, it doesn't matter. Um, we're known for having weird food. People will come and try it at least once. And that'll raise our profits by 25%, which I think is actually the statistic I read. Wow. Yeah, I guess to come up with something, people try it one time. You don't like it. Don't try it again. Still got that one item, that one special trip. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, when I think Burger King, I think bespoke meals. <laughs> Hey man, can I get um can I just get a whole bunch of Doritos just crunched up? Like bottom of the bag Doritos. Can I get those sprinkled on onion rings? <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Dorito battered onion rings, we can do that. Well, and it's like well, they, they took chicken fries, right? And made mm -hmm. the chicken fry rings. 
Yeah. It's like, that's come on, man. That's the same fucking thing you're selling us. <laughs> no, no, man. The it's it's the circular represents the infinity of Burger King's admiration for you people who buy food. It's the chicken tender uh, Ouroboros. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rings we use to ask you to marry us <laughs> and die an early death. <laughs> um when I die, Tyler, will you come to my grave site uh, on my birthday and Put a box of chicken fries. <laughs> well, every tombstone. every time Burger King releases something new, I'll dig up a little bit of your grave and bury the food, mm. then tap it back down. <laughs> Here, Dave's worms. Here. Why are there always raccoons at Dave's gravesite? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know Dave was a were raccoon? Oh, that makes so much sense. Well, Dave was a huge fan of the the movie The Great Outdoors, starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> and you know the raccoons. They had a they played a big role in it too. So <laughs> we couldn't get Dan Aykroyd or John Candy, God rest his soul, to come to Dave's grave site. So we did the next best thing. <laughs> we tried. There's always a a bottle of that skull vodka Dan Aykroyd makes on Dave's grave, but he was not interested. In fact, he sued us. But when I was at Walmart the other day just picking things up. I happened upon another aisle or display of new flavors of chips that I had not seen before. Mm -hmm. So I guess to celebrate the Olympics, Lay's is doing a whole like chips from around the world promotion. I need to throw this in because the tagline, the slogan for this is hilarious. I'm looking at a bunch of bag of chips in front of me. Mm -hmm. Lay's official slogan for these, this collection Mm -hmm. of chips is... A passport to flavor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Mad Men style ad team oh, at Lay's. Man. So I brought my passport, as you can see, and I'm ready to have it stamped by Mr. Lay's. <laughs> so in front of me, I have, let's see, the India uh, tiki masala, the Chinese Szechuan chicken, Greek tzatziki, and Brazilian pecana. I have not tried the tzatziki, pecana, or Szechuan. I had to try the tiki masala. I've also had it. <laughs> I had a, I had a smaller bag like this, ate the whole thing, went out and bought the bigger bag. It's the first time I've done that with any of these new flavors of chips. So we're pulling the curtain back. We're yep. not going to act and pretend like yep. we haven't had the, mm, nope. the tiki masala yeah. chips. We have. So spoilers... They're fucking They're good. really good. They're really fucking but good. We're, we're still going to try it, yep, though. Yep, <laughs> What better compliment to a, wap- to a Waparito? But here we go. I am still eating the Waparito. And I'm very glad that at least these are kettle cooked. Because, man, I do not enjoy just plain style lays anymore. Really? I just think they're greasy and not crunchy enough. I just... I, do not like them. Yeah, I do like the crunchiness of the kettle chip. It's got to be baked lays or kettle cooked lays. Otherwise, I'm generally I'm just not interested. I'm gonna try these, but I know I'm not gonna like them. So much. the only one that's kettle cooked is the tiki masala. Okay, I cheated and already ate one. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Oh, they're good. Let's see. I eat this one. Damn, we should have recorded a disclaimer saying if you don't like us eating food on the mics, skip ahead to. 20 minutes. Because there are some people that really like it. Right. But we get it sent to us. They enjoy our, the food review. Some people fucking hate this. And I understand that. <laughs> so, yeah. This isn't a show about snacks, although it should be. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the, the tiki marsala, as someone like my favorite Indian dish, I always get, you know, blazingly hot chicken tiki masala wherever I go. This is certainly, I mean, it doesn't taste just like it, but it's pretty reminiscent. It's definitely like... If I had to try it not knowing what it was, I, this, I would guess that's what it is. Who makes those non-chips? Do you know what I'm talking about? The, yeah. The, like the crackers, essentially. The tandoori like spice non-bread. crackers. Yeah, those are real good. They need to get on this flavor train to success and make, they like need to partner up with Lay's and mm-hmm. be like, look, we want this flavor. We want to powder our fucking non <laughs> with all this shit. Man, that would be, oh man, that'd be good. Because I've only had, they have like the plain and the tandoori spice ones, which mm-hmm. I mean they're they're good, but mm-hmm. this would be really good. All right, what do you want to try next? Let's take it to China, the Chinese chicken. <laughs> take it, uh, China, the Chinese chicken. Something a drumstick. Your brain, brain stops, stops ticking. ticking. Heart stops ticking. Something. Heart stops ticking. I don't know. Watching X Files with the lights uh-huh. on. 
Jaller Maison. <laughs> it's what I hear, but I don't know. That's what, what he's saying. <laughs> something that's all about value or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> all right, let's see. The smell test. Mm hmm. That smells weird. That smells incredibly weird. Let me stick my snooter in there. Mm -mm. It does smell... It's got like a metallic smell to me. It's kind of weird. This is really weird. This mm -hmm. smells to me like the inside of a food giant in 1994. <laughs> Appropriate. It really... Like, this is weird. <laughs> this is taking me back to, like, <laughs> shopping with my mom and not absolutely not wanting to, reading a Wolverine, I think, number 98. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever whatever the story arc was when Wolverine went to the Savage Land. Mm, okay, pull out one of these chips to try. There you go. Mm. Yeah, this is. It doesn't really even. I can smell. It doesn't. It doesn't smell flavorful. It does. It smells like food, though. Yeah. Like almost like a space age food where it's like you don't ex you expect it to only nourish you. This is soylent. This is soylent chip. <laughs> After that kettle cooked chip, this just tastes, I don't like the texture, it's just flat. Yeah, I, it almost tastes stale. Yeah. But it's weird because it's, I just literally saw you open that bag just now. Mm -hmm. And it's just because we had the super crunchy kettle cooked. Um, It's pretty weak. Yeah, pass. I, I can't recommend that. In chip. regards to flavor, like, man, that's fucking weak. It smells weak, it tastes weak. And I love Szechuan chicken. So. Oh, I do too. But yeah, hard pass on that one. Yeah, that's garbage. Oh no, here's this one is uh, the Greek tzatziki is a wavy lay. Oh okay, so that's different. We'll go to we'll go to Greece next. Now I typically don't like Greek food, so we'll we'll see if it see. tastes like bankruptcy, rebellion. Oh, okay, it smells oniony, like Teen Spirit. <laughs> because like I guess because they had the Euro chips. So I guess it was like, what's the best part of the Euro bite likes? Oh, the tzatziki sauce. Okay, I just make chips from that. This does, man, is this going to be another one? Like, remember like, <laughs> w what, a year or two ago where we tried the different flavors? And mm -hmm. like one of them was like, this just tastes like sour cream and onion chips or whatever. Like, th I have a feeling might, that's what this one's mm, going to be like. Yeah. Which one was it? It wasn't like. It might have been the Euro. I don't know. You know what? I think it was. Yeah. Do you think they just repackaged it? Man. It would not surprise me at all. This is, I mean, this is really close, so. It smells it, at least. Now, this is, what is tzatziki? It's um, a yogurt sauce, like a cucumber yogurt sauce that goes on. It's like a traditional Greek sauce. Okay. And you, you'll find that on every gyro. That's what they. They served it at Uncle Jesse's wedding? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's a little different. That's fine. I can actually taste the cucumber, oddly enough. Yeah. That's which fine. I wouldn't have expected that. It's okay. I, I feel like they made the right call making these wavy chips. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's not bad. Not great either. Not bad. C rank. Yeah. Now what's the last what's the last stamp on our passport to flavor? The last one is the Brazilian Pacana. Brazilian Pacana. This so, one's guaranteed to give us diarrhea. So then it was. <laughs> it says so on the bag. The logo is Goatsy. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl's Revenge. Montezuma. Montezuma's Revenge. No, I like Quetzalcoatl better. <laughs> because, of course, it, then it has to explain underneath it steak and chimichurri sauce. Okay. A steak chip, eh? So I'm going to be willing it doesn't taste that much like steak. It's just going to taste like chimichurri sauce. Now, I've never had that, I don't think. It's, I mean, it's good. It's, I mean, we used to put it on steaks at work a lot. Yeah, I want to stick my, mm. stick my snout in there, get a whiff. Mm. That doesn't, that doesn't really smell like anything to me. Yeah. All right, here you go. Oh, they're green, kind of. I mean, they're like, the flavoring is green. I expected them to be like mm. steak colored. Nope, definitely steak. Wow, that's crazy. Yep, got that one totally wrong. This is crazy. How they make a chip taste like steak? Tyler. That's pretty. That's pretty heavy on the umami. Yeah, I think it's. Hmm. Wow. I think they hit the smoke, the smoky taste of a steak, mm. and that's really mm. what it is. Those aren't bad. Yeah, they're not bad. But the clear winner of the passport oh. to flavor contest, tiki masala, tiki absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, this is a pecan is a B because it's interesting. All right, so yeah, let's rank them. 
tikka masala definitely at the top, right? Yep. yep. And then next, what do you think? The Brazilian Brazilian what is it called? Bacana piranhas. Pur- the Brazilian, Brazilian piranhas. piranhas or the uh, tanuki suit, the wavy tanuki <laughs> suit. The, the the piranhas definitely. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, uh, it's close for me, yeah. but I also agree. And then and then at the very bottom. Oh, the Szechuan chicken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Ticket to China. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if you want to buy these, buy the small bags and everything but the tiki masala. Just go and get the big bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the big bag. Um, We're also starved for Indian food in this town. So that might play into it. If you have a plethora of Indian restaurants um, near you, first of all, Fuck you. <laughs> I'm very jealous of you. By that I meant I meant congratulations. I'm very happy for congratulations, you. Congratulations, Chandra and Paul. Very happy. And your for Indian you. restaurants and your marriage. <laughs> Actually, Nashville, I don't think has a good Indian restaurant. The two that I have tried have not been stellar. Yeah. I didn't they, know they, they had okay. two. I knew they had like Bombay, what? Bombay Palace. Right. And the other one is what I got stuff from last year. The other time. one is the name of it. The one in Clarksville is pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Tandoori in Clarksville. Uh, of course, when I ate in there, Spice Factor was on point. Really? Getting it to go three times in a row. Yeah. Super bland until I called the chef out and then he gave me something fucking loaded. I could only eat it like a little bit at a time. It lasted me four days. It nice. was really fucking hot. <laughs> what was the chef's name? I don't know. Just a uh, Indian guy in a, in a Yankees cap. <laughs> Indian guy, I'm calling you yeah. out. <laughs> Because I could, I asked the waitress like last time I tried this is like it was it was not I asked for the hottest and it was really it was not like I get the same thing I tell everyone in an Indian restaurant I get that I'm white right but please don't hold back like I want something hot she's like okay I'll, I'll talk to the chef she went back there and I no one else was in the restaurant so I heard her talking to him and as she was saying it then I yelled from the front yes please and he came out like okay I'll challenge you <laughs> All right, awesome do it I love it. Oh. I love it. You're, you're a little spicy boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gonna talk about Touch Monroe? Yes, I do. I do want to. I don't want to talk about it. But, oh man, I want to talk about it. I finished my wa- my waparito. Mm-hmm. You want mine? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. I had Marco's pizza before this, so I saw those sitting on yeah. your counter, and when I saw them, I was like, "Oh well, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should have asked him if he wanted a whole one." But here's the thing: I knew that I wanted a whole one. Like this is this is dinner for me. I just ate my dinner while we recorded the podcast, <laughs> and I think that's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> You're a multitasker. It's good. I gotta be, man. That's that's what Pokemon Go has taught me. I can do all kinds of things and play Pokemon Go. <laughs> Drive, buckle my son into a car seat, <laughs> work. Receive oral. Uh, yeah. yeah. Give, give oral. <laughs> well, th- those I knew already <laughs> going in. You hear that, Dave? What is what is that? Mm. I hear something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what is that that I hear? Huh. It kind of sounds like, it kind of sounds like processed meat being like, <laughs> Crammed into a tortilla shell. There we go. Uh, I would I would know that slurp from anywhere. <laughs> I hear the I hear the <laughs> I hear the phantom cries of cows from inside my intestines. The emo- the ammonia soaked pink slurry. Mm. Mm. Oh, love it. Hey, there was a real tomato in that that I ate. I'm pretty sure the oh, pickles man. were real, too. <laughs> How the fuck did yeah. that get in there? That must have fallen out of somebody's pocket. <laughs> of course I hear that, Tyler. Which, as we all know, ushers in a segment, which we like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Okay, guys. Toe Jam and Earl is an action video game developed by Johnson Vorsanger Productions and published by... Sega for the Sega Genesis video game console. That does sound Johnson Johnson Vorsanger. I know like an evil corporation in like a some kind of a movie. See, I was thinking like maybe some lighthearted like tickle ass shit <laughs> in a locker room. Hey man, did you guys see did you guys see Joe's Johnson Vorsanger? <laughs> He's got a real Vorsanger. <laughs> Fucker's got a real Vorsanger. Holy over there. shit. Congrats, man. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why Michelle's smiling all the time. <laughs> I didn't know she knew how to handle Michelle a Vorsanger. Vorsanger. 
Uh, it was released in uh, 1991. It centers on, you may have heard of these guys, Toe Jam and Earl. Tyler, these are alien rappers who have crash landed on Earth. Uh, as they attempt to escape the planet, this is Toe Jam and Earl, uh, players assume the role of either character and collect pieces of their wrecked spacecraft. Uh, Toe Jam and Earl's design was heavily influenced by the role-playing video game Rogue. And then by that, they mean the, the game design, not the character mm -hmm. design, uh, because the only character designs in Rogue uh, was an ampersand, I believe, and letters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they took from Rogue such features as the random generation of levels and items. It references and parodies 1980s and early 90s urban culture and is set to a funk soundtrack. Tyler, this game was positively received by critics who praised its originality, mm -hmm. soundtrack, humor, and two-player cooperative mode. Uh, it attained sleeper hit status despite low initial sales, and its protagonists were used as mascots by Sega. That was after mm. Alex Kidd, but before Sonic the Hedgehog. Gotcha. So now we've got it. We're kind of forming a timeline. I like it. <laughs> have you ever played Rogue? Nope, I have um, not. I think you would like it. I really do. Yeah. I think you would like it. Um, I had never played it either until I was doing research on Toe Jam and Earl. And, you know, I've heard of it all the time. Like Rogue, Rogue, and Rogue Likes and like all that. I know like what the general idea is. I get the concept, mm -hmm. but I never actually played the game. Uh, there is a browser version online that you can just play. Um, and I, I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, it is very intricate, I feel like. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, and I don't think you'd really know that you can do them unless you read the two-page help file. <laughs> so, I mean, if you, can get, if you can get beyond that, I think you're good to go. But it's like, it reminds me of some old-school D&D uh, dungeon crawls kind okay. of thing. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of role-playing to it, but um, there is a lot of cool um, stuff like hidden passages that you find. And you have to actively search for and stuff like that. So. I mean, because that's still, especially on Steam, a really popular genre. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems to have, like, come back into mm -hmm. fashion recently. Um, of course, um, Rogue Legacy, which is a game we yeah. talked about oh. years ago. Yeah. And I still love that game. Yeah. Um, God, I want a full sequel. Yeah, absolutely. Are, is there, are there talks of a full sequel? Not or? that, I, not that oh, I've heard. Bummer. But like the DLC or the the what they came out with afterward, like, oh, I, I fucking hated it. So oh, really? I'm so sad, yeah. I don't think I ever played the DLC for Rogue Legacy. What do they add? It is just um, special challenge bosses where you're given a very underpowered custom class huh. to try and beat it. So you build the class before you go, or what? No, you just, whenever you walk into the door, your class switches to this unique oh, character a set. fighting a unique version of one of the four bosses. That doesn't seem like it's in line with the original game at no, all. No, it was not. Because <laughs> the one, because I got to two of the bosses, and one you had to fight, one is a very, very weak ninja with like a different set of skills, mm -hmm. and it was... Of course, I mean, it's meant to be super, super challenging. Sure. And it was, like, to the point that I was just like, oh, this is not fun. This is not fun at all. Like, I played the shit out of this game. Oh, I enjoyed yeah. the challenge of it. This is not fun. This is a, well, it's going to be a while, so we're going to give you something really just fucking over-the-top bullshit hard. I got you. So I was just like, okay, well, I enjoyed the rest of the game. Yeah, that's and put a bummer. it down Because I had all the achievements until that came out. And it was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to put myself through this. I don't like it. So just for all the achievements again. Well, it sounds like I'm going to skip that. Yeah, you should. It's, it's, nah, it's not good. So Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam and Earl. Tyler, I, as I mentioned earlier in this episode, this is a game that I always heard a lot about. Mm -hmm. Me and, too. And I never got to play it. And I was familiar with Toe Jam and Earl. Like that's how, I feel like that's how... Like, that's a measure of the game's success. Yeah. The fact that I knew the characters but had never played the game before. Or if it's not a measure of the game's success, it's at least a measure of the originality of Toe Jam and Roll, mm -hmm. like the character design. Um, I, <laughs> what do you think about, what do you think about the character design in the game? Because I feel like that's a long talking point. It's, it's very, to me, it is very Rocco's Modern Life. 
the whole thing like reeks of Rocco's Modern Life. Like like the backgrounds, the and backgrounds, stuff like that. the music, the character designs. Like it just reminds me so much of that show. So yeah, the and it, of course like people, a lot of people have said like coming on the episode talk about us playing it like that. This encapsulates the '90s perfectly, and I think they're absolutely right. Like yeah. everything about this exemplifies '90s culture. Which is weird to me. It's like I understand it. I can point it out when I see it, but I have trouble describing it. I guess because it's the it's the era in which I grew up. So it's just right. like it's like Americans being told like, no, you have an American accent. There's no such thing as an American accent. So like the '90s are hard for me to quantify as a as a as a thing. Right. So are the two thousands. So like recognize. See, the two thousands are more difficult for me. Yeah. Than like the early two thousands because it's like. I was just thinking the other day, like, what were some catchphrases from the early 2000s? And I kind of like sat there. Ah, I don't really know. I'm sure they're. I'm sure they exist. <laughs> giggity, giggity. But and see, then it makes me feel old because yeah. it's like, oh, I still say some of these <laughs> things. So maybe that's why I don't realize that uh, they're old. Man, I am so glad that you said Rocco's Modern Life because uh, for two reasons. First of all, Rhythm Master, cute butt, archivist Paul Korn. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me know that Nickelodeon is doing a Rocco's Modern Life movie. Did you know that? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yes. Wow. I know. Okay, I'm in. I know, I am too. <laughs> I'm hoping that it is something that I can um, watch without having Nickelodeon, because I do not have Nickelodeon. <laughs> Man. Uh, the, the second thing is I. you went Rocco's Modern Life, I went Rugrats. Because uh, I see that too. Like all the animated backgrounds in this reminded me of the uh, classic Gisupo, um title screens. You know how they'd have like the title cards for like mm-hmm. Tommy's Big Day. Or something. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of that, which made me think of. I went down to the riverfront the other night when you, me, and Brandon went mm-hmm. after we recorded. There, I don't know if you saw her, but there was a woman down there who totally. Totally, 100%, not even like in her, this is in her natural speaking voice, sounded exactly like Tommy Pickles. <laughs> it was amazing. And wait, it gets better. She was belligerently drunk. <laughs> she was wearing a diaper and a t shirt <laughs> and was bald. She was so drunk. And it was just like, it was amazing hearing a drunk. Tommy Pickles talk about dancing with Pikachu. <laughs> was she the one that was yelling about like Team Valor? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. She was yelling at Brandon about <laughs> Pikachu. Uh, she kept at, like begging him to take a photograph of her with Pikachu. Uh, to the point where like when we saw her again later, he was like, oh no. And like, and like I know like when Brandon, someone makes Brandon uncomfortable. It's like, wow, that, that got intense. Okay, so uh, you drove Brennan out there, and I drove him back because he kept his car at my house. Right. On the way back, I noticed several cars at Fantasy World. Oh, yeah? So I was like, Brandon, let's go check this out. Oh, did you re- <laughs> Did you go? We did. <laughs> you bastard. You went without <laughs> we me. We did. We didn't pay any money. We didn't come up the back. But we went in. <laughs> this time, there were girls there. Oh, really? And as soon as we walked in, Brennan was like, what the fuck? I've lived in San Francisco and New York and all over the place. It is hard to to creep me out. I am thoroughly creeped out. What was creepy about it? I mean, just besides the things that you mentioned on this show before, yeah. anything new, like any new development? Uh, besides the girls. Right. Because it was right. still like the two guys, the one guy who looked like a melted lurch sitting at a table silently. Because Brandon was like, who's that fucking mutant just sitting at that table silently? I was like, I don't know. I don't I mean, maybe if we get out of line, he gets up and, and murders us. I don't know. But <laughs> And then, of course, the guy at the, behind the counter, uh, a girl who who most generously I will describe as busted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she, as soon as we walked in, like she was, they were smoking inside. She was smoking. She's like, oh, yeah, you guys want to dance? And Brandon was like, uh, <laughs> let me, I mean, what's, uh, I mean, first, like, what are the amenities at, um, at this, uh, fantasy world? And, uh, the old guy behind the counter was just like, uh, we got some, uh, some magazines over there. You got some lingerie over here. I mean, just like a bullshit, like, uh, a bunch of shit no one cares about. You want a hand job or not? 
Because <laughs> Brenda like walked over and looked at the lingerie part. He's like, what the fuck is this? It's like a bunch of like rubber, like captain's jackets. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's like, you, do you want to, you want to dance? Uh, not right now. Maybe, maybe let me, let me think about it. And then I heard something in the back and I saw what looked. What, was it screams? <laughs> <laughs> there was, because of course all the booth uh, doors were closed and there was one door off to the side that I thought was like a storage closet. Cause you can see inside it a little bit. And there was like, there was a folding table that looked like a hose and tools and stuff on it. That's the backyard wrestling room. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> he, he was like, yeah, we got another girl back there. She's doing a show right now. She'll be out here later. And I was like, that, that's a showroom? <laughs> and eventually, like, a girl who was, okay, yeah, walked out topless. Here at so Fantasy least, World, everyone's a performer. <laughs> <laughs> so at least so, I mean, we, saw, we saw boobs when we were there for the brief, for the brief second. And then before Brandon was just like... Okay, I want to go home now. <laughs> so Brandon's like, yeah, I saw the boobs. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's go. And as we were leaving, you know, the lady was like, oh, come back. Come back and see us. Brandon was like, I will. I'm going to come back with a whole bunch of money and spend all of it. <laughs> and the girl was like, oh, good, good. Make sure you ask for ju- Duchess. Ask for Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what did she say her name was? Duchess. We have to ask for Duchess. <laughs> So yeah, that's that, that's our brief excursion to get into fantasy world. I'm glad that we have an update. <laughs> Once the Patreon hits three hundred dollars, we'll go spend spend some money and see, we'll see spend, what goes we'll on. Ask for Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> you, I'd say you would look at best to be an intermediate. <laughs> You ain't ready for Duchess. <laughs> you ain't ready for Duchess. <laughs> you ain't ready for fuck unicorn. <laughs> Screwnicorn. Screwnicorn. <laughs> I thought back back to Toe Jam and Earl, who are also, I assume, f- frequenters mm-hmm. at Fantasy World. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you you mentioned Rocco's Modern Life, which made me think of Rugrats. I thought that okay, Earl is a large orange alien mm-hmm. who wears uh, sneakers and large polka dot shorts. Looks like bo- boxer shorts. To me, he he reminds me of. Patrick from SpongeBob man, SquarePants. Man, you are right. He's like a beige Patrick. Like I defy. I don't know who created SpongeBob. I feel like that's something I should know. But I defy the creator to be like, oh no, that wasn't it, that wasn't influential at all <laughs> because they look the, like they could be cousins. It's like a cross between what is the what was the the Seven Up or the Sprite the the advertisement for like Sprite in Europe. It was that weird drawing. It's with like, the wavy hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks like that cross with SpongeBob is Earl because he has like that wavy hair and sunglasses, and then the rest is just Patrick's body. I think it does. I think it's antenna. Antenna. I think it is antenna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. All right. When you were a kid, did you watch Saturday morning cartoons? I did. Of course you did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you were, we're of that age. Mm-hmm. Where that's that's how we spent Saturday mornings. I was, you, I was a chubby kid. Of course I was. Yeah, naturally, I wanted cartoons. cereal. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to get as much like sugar and milk as I could get yep. into my <laughs> system. Lacto sucrose just, and just sit here. Yeah. Bring Good. it on. Let's dump some some gym donuts in there, sop up the extra milk, and we're good. You know, if you smash up those donuts real good, it's like a second bowl of cereal. <laughs> so, okay, so you watch Saturday morning cartoons. Do you recall a show called Bump in the Night? Oh, yeah. That featured I do. that featured this guy. Yep. Who totally looks like a green Toe Jam. Man, I this completely is... forgot about that show because it was like a kid's closet at night or his room and that, that thing was going around, all the different toys and yeah, man. So my point is... What is it? It was Claymation, right? It was Claymation. That was Mr. Bumpy. I'll have a link to that in the show notes <laughs> if, if you're uh, fortunate enough to be younger than us and, and are not familiar with Bump in the Night. Nicole. Yes, Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. He looks like a red version. He also reminded me of uh, a little bit because he has he's a three legged red flame tube flame. alien. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I could have done that for like a full minute. Like we could just we could have just filled a minute. I mean, you're just. Uh, 
In a minute. In a minute. In a minute. In a minute. <laughs> After these messages, <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, man. I forgot about that part. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that it was Nickelodeon had this artist. I forget what he did. Um, I think he died of AIDS early on, but he did a. Mr. Pumpy? No, Mr. Mr. Pumpy. His artist for Nickelodeon. Of course he did. <laughs> Mr. Pumpy was patient zero? <laughs> Of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> he was fucking bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but the design that this guy used to do of like legs and arms, I forget an early Nickelodeon, like cartoons and like they did, they had like statues and stuff dedicated to him at like Nickelodeon Studios. And uh, he was a cartoonist? Uh huh. Okay, in the 90s? Uh huh. All right, so let's run through all the Nicktoons. Well, he didn't like do anything like with Nicktoons. It was like little shows in between. Oh, uh, like the bumpers, like the yeah. Nick, 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 Nick. Yep, exactly. Nickelodeon <laughs> with like the brontosauruses and shit. That guy. Uh, I just remember him doing like humans or like caricatures of humans. It's hard to describe because it's lodged so far back there. Don't worry, I have a computer <laughs> in the internet. I'm gonna do a Google search for Nickelodeon AIDS. <laughs> Nickelodeon AIDS artist. <laughs> See what pops up. <laughs> Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. The design that he used to do of humans sort of re- remind me of 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 Toe Jam. Keith Haring. Sure. Which is a name that I <laughs> don't recognize. Um, but yeah, he's the guy you're talking about. Who would do like almost like hieroglyphic style like yeah. humans and stuff with like mm-hmm. wavy lines and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. So Flavor Flav with, the, with that is Toe Jam. Right. Because he has the backwards baseball cap and chains. And he has a big old dick that he puts a shoe on. Because <laughs> he has three, three legs. Three legs, you're right. <laughs> and even he fucks New York 20 years later. Oh, yeah. All right. So. And also, like, when you start this game up, all the backgrounds and things like that very much remind me of, like, Windows 95 wallpapers and screen screensavers. Oh, yeah. Because, like, when I saw them in the background was, like, the bubbles on the black background, mm-hmm. like they straight lifted that from oh, Windows. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're like the screensavers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I love that. I, I I pray for the flying toasters every time. <laughs> um, Tyler, okay. So Toe Jam and Earl, they're two aliens mm-hmm. from the planet Funkatron. Funkatron. And because the sequel, I think, is Return to Funkatron. I believe that is mm-hmm. correct, which I, I think a lot of people think is the first game. Um, mm. because that's, I feel like that's the one that's referenced all the time because Funkatron is a really cool name. Um, <laughs> it's very funky, but it's super funky. <laughs> so funky. Um, this is like the opposite of Kyle Blackthorne. Like, the, like the, that was so metal. This is so funky. Uh, so Toe Jam and Earl are flying their rocket ship and Earl decides that he wants to drive and he hits an asteroid and they crash land on earth. And their rocket ship falls apart into 10 pieces. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do as either Toe Jam or Earl is collect the 10 pieces of your spacecraft so that you can return to planet Funkatron. Mm -hmm. Yep. And because, again, when I started this game, I had no idea what was coming. I expected some sort of a platformer. I expected a, a side-scrolling platformer. You did not get that. Oh, not at all. Would you say that you were pleasantly surprised or disappointed? Pleasantly surprised. Me too. Because those are a dime a dozen on, on 16-bit consoles. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. I really enjoyed this game. I feel like it had some faults. Like. Yeah. It's a slow game. That's my biggest yeah. complaint is that this is a slow game. Uh, it takes a long time to traverse anywhere. And I think that's done on purpose. I think yep. that's a design decision um, because while you're traversing planet motherfucking Earth, you are being chased by all kinds of representations of suburbanite Earthlings. Yeah, you're in like the surrealist acid trip of... Uh, a suburban housewife who is miserable with her life and has taken too many pills and is dreaming of her death. So yeah, that's good. There you go. It's the flowing consciousness it's, of a woman slowly bleeding out in the bathtub yeah. with a glass of champagne. <laughs> it's the ebbing, the ebbing blackness of unconsciousness as she leaves this mortal coil. <laughs> 
Uh, man, we're so positive here. <laughs> after, after eating a Whopperito. <laughs> Nicole would be proud of that little tangent. <laughs> so, okay. I think that's really interesting that this is a very interesting look at humanity. Mm -hmm. And I know this is going to go probably way too deep than anybody <laughs> wants to go. But I do think it's interesting how, like, these aliens are viewing us as humans mm -hmm. and seeing all the weird shit. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the enemies in the game. The one that comes to mind immediately is the... Um, Woman pushing the baby in the shopping cart. Yep, that is an that is an enemy, um, and I believe that she screams at the baby. I think she screams at shut up. I'm not positive. Mm, okay, <laughs> or shut your mouth or something so along those Florida. lines. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, there are mailboxes, which are essentially mimics from mm -hmm. D and D. They pretend to be mailboxes yep. and pop out. Um, there are uh, tornadoes, which I mean, those occur in other planets in our solar system. Mm -hmm. So I don't really get that one. Uh, doctors. There are doctors. You have to avoid the doctors. Uh, cupids. Cupids. That fire arrows at you that won't, that function like being mushroomized and earthbound. Is that what happens when it hits you? Mm -hmm. It makes your, yeah, it randomly switches your controls. So if they hit you in an edge, oh, God. you're going to, you're going to walk right off the edge. I love it. There's a pack of nerds. Oh, I didn't see them. They suck, man, because they're fast and they will squish you flat. Boom, like a pancake, oh. and it takes a lot of help. Because I know there are also tourists going around taking pictures as a group. Uh, the fat guy, Carl from Aqua Teen, pushing a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. He's not an enemy, but Santa Claus. Right. Because, that, cause, okay, it's top down, and basically you're in this random, like it doesn't make sense, but you're on this like maze of land, and there are presents everywhere and enemies everywhere, and you're trying to either, one, find the piece of your spaceship and find the elevator door to go up to the next level, or just get to the next level. There may not be a piece of your ship on a given level. And the game will let you know That's yeah. if there is a piece of your spacecraft on the level you're on. As soon as you this exit game would the be elevator... This a nightmare if they didn't do that. Absolutely. And I've, I've been thinking about this because I enjoyed this game, but I did not enjoy any of the Rare game, the games that Rare produced for the Nintendo 64. And those games are essentially... Games where you collect shit. Just collect thons, yep. So I was, I really stopped and I thought about like, why do I like Toe Jam and Earl over um, Conker's Bad Fur Day, uh, Donkey Kong, or uh, Donkey Kong 64? Like, why, why do I like Toe Jam and Earl, but I don't like those other games? And I came up with a few different reasons. Mm -hmm. Toe Jam and Earl is not a platformer at all. Nope. Like, it is not at all. It's a, it's a, more of a dungeon crawler. Absolutely, and I like that. Um, and meanwhile, the Rare games on the N64 are very much platformers mm -hmm. where you just collect a bunch of stuff. Yeah. In Toe Jam and Earl, you are collecting 10 things over the course of possibly 25 levels. Mm -hmm. But in the Rare games on the or Nintendo 64... Or more if you choose random. Oh, uh, do they go above twenty five? Because there levels? is there is a uh a because you can play fixed or random. Yes. Once you play random, I mean, you could go thirty random levels before getting piece of your ship. Really, like, I thought it capped out. It at It makes 25. it where you can go. From what I what I read, like you you can do if you pick that setting, you can play essentially for an incredibly long amount of Interesting. time. Interesting. I didn't know that. Um, I played on random. And I didn't finish the game, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I died um, with eight piece, seven or eight pieces. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you don't have only things in Toe Jam and Earl you have to collect are those ten pieces of spacecraft. You technically don't have to collect the Anything presents. Else, yeah. And all the presents are are their power ups. They're not just things that you collect to open a random fucking door or, or fuck you ups. Yeah, or the yeah, the power ups are fuck you ups. Do you, you want to talk about those? Yeah, whenever you pick up a present, it's just all question marks. So you can open it not knowing what it is. More than likely, I mean, there are some bad stuff. Like there's what total bummer is the one you open it up and you, you just die. Yeah, but there are, I mean, it's tons of good stuff. So the only thing you can really do is it's a deck of many things essentially. Yeah, yep, but there it has its own version of Deckard Kane that you can go visit and give bucks to, and he will identify your presence, the uh, Banana Man. I believe you mean Sam Elliott dressed as a <laughs> carrot. 
carrot man. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> because that's the first thing I thought of when I saw him. I was like, is that fucking Sam Elliott in this game? Dressed as a carrot? <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> This housewife must have been forced to watch Roadhouse for the 200th fucking time. <laughs> that, this is actually Roadhouse the Game. I don't know if you knew that or not. But this game <laughs> was developed as Roadhouse the Game. But Roadhouse pulled out, and then they created Because it was Toe Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott as right. Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, absolutely. And then when they pulled out California Raisins, tried to scoop in there. But they were like, no, I'm sorry. We already have two vaguely claymation characters. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's probably because of Bump in the Night. But Toe Jam and Earl, to me, should be Claymation. Man, I can see that. Are you familiar with their... uh, They just did a Kickstarter recently for uh, a new Toe Jam and Earl game. No. Oh, dude. It looks like... It looks like it was built around... Honestly, it looks like a Don't Starve mod. Uh, everything kind of has that like paper look to it, uh, okay. and it looked okay. But I was so disappointed that they didn't look like claymation. Yeah, like that to me would have been like I don't know these characters. They just they're so I honestly this is gonna sound crazy because they're ridiculously designed. But like I like the character design. Yeah. Beside the fact that Earl has a belly button, I really like <laughs> the character design. Well, he's not Calix Y. He's a different alien <laughs> entirely. <laughs> He definitely did not hatch from an egg. We know that. <laughs> because I, although I never did it, like, because you'll see Santa Claus, and if he notices you, he'll jetpack away. But you can sneak up on him, and he'll give you presents if you can sneak up on him, which I never did. I didn't either. I didn't know that you could do that until I read it on the, mm-hmm. the Game Facts. Uh, annoying enemies are moles. Yes, who steal your presents. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, the ducks that look like they have some kind of tomato launcher. Those are fucking chickens. Chickens. <laughs> with a tomato launcher. <laughs> Um, hey, if you have never played this game before and you want to know what it looks like, I did play this on Twitch. Mm-hmm. There will be a link to that in the show notes. There is a stage that I got to that had three groups of chickens with tomato launchers. Ooh. And it went from hilarious to infuriating <laughs> like that. Like, I feel like <laughs> zero to 60, just like, like there it is. The ho- holy <laughs> shit. Because it's like just tomatoes fucking everywhere and then what what did i do i decided oh let me just use one of these random presents i'm in trouble i'm hurt really bad like i mean they took my health down like immediately Mm -hmm. so i get desperate i'm like let me use one of these random presents i chose a present all of a sudden tomatoes start raining down from the sky i opened a present that made tomato weather (laughs) so now it's like three groups of chickens firing tomatoes they're raining down on me and i just i just died i mean there was no escape no escaping it no escaping the tomatoes oh so the the humans they so they landed during christmas it's like okay so they give each other these mystery boxes yeah. which either makes them happy or sad and they all appear to fear the the fruit of the nightshade <laughs> They throw them at the people they find unpleasant. We've seen this. Waka waka. It is witnessed. <laughs> We've watched Muppet Babies. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, let's see, good stuff out of the gifts. You can get basically wings yeah, to fly around. Yeah, Icarus wings are amazing. Right. Your high top sneakers that yeah. just make you move faster. Uh, rocket shoes that make you move a lot faster, but oftentimes, because you can fall off the edge of every level. The whole game is like right. a tower that you're yes. trying to climb. So if you go off the edge, or something throws you off the edge, or yeah, basically you'll plummet at least one floor. Yeah, m- sometimes multiple times. Yeah, depending on like if there's anything underneath you. Mm-hmm. So if you're on level fifteen and you fall off the edge, if there's on if on level fourteen, if there's land where you fell, you'll stop there. Yeah. If there's not, you're gonna continue to fall. Yep. Did you find the present that's called Unfall? No. There's a present called Unfall <laughs> that when you use it, it brings you back up to the level you fell from. Oh. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, cause I, for, I mentioned the death present. Yes. Total bummer. Uh, decoys that will make like a little scarecrow of whatever character that the enemies will then concentrate on. Which I thought was awesome, but it like pops immediately. Like as soon as something hits it, it's gone. Yeah. And they, they keep coming for you. There's the rose bushes though. I didn't get the rose bush. The rose bush, um, you plant a seed behind you, and a rose bush sprouts up, and it blocks enemies from, oh, from getting Oh, okay. 
Uh, there's a boom box, but I never used it. The boom box I use, and I don't, I don't, but I don't know what it does. It's like, <laughs> like the music box in Mario 3. It's like, what? You put the lions to sl- Okay. It seemed to distract the tiny devil that was chasing me with a pitchfork, <laughs> but I cannot be sure because those are an early dumb enemy. Uh, the inner tube. I never got the inner tube. Which lets you go in water. Okay. You can go in, but you will drown. Yeah, you can have like three seconds of swimming before you drown. The rocket shoes will allow you to skim over water. Man. Or the inner tube, you can freely travel. Dude, those Icarus wings, though. Man, yeah. they're amazing. <laughs> because not only do you go faster, but you can fly over enemies, and you can fly over like negative space. So mm-hmm. like, if you, you don't have to go the long route if there's a big gap between like you and the exit, for example. Uh, you just fly straight there. I love it. Because you always find elevator, like 1950s-style elevator doors just standing there, and that's how you go into that and go over to the next level. It reminded me of Beetlejuice, the elevator door. Yeah. The, car- the Beetlejuice cartoon. Yep, yep. 100%. 100% <laughs> you know, we're Beetlejuice and Lydia. We're apparently lovers. <laughs> yeah, some sort of ghost and child couple <laughs> with their sentient car. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot about the car. Do me. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Doomy was the best character in the show. Oh, how'd I forget about <laughs> Doomy? I can't even, I'm not even positive. Are you positive that's the name? I am wow. positive. Doomy is his name. Doomy. Because I think like Beetlejuice's car died and he tried to bring him back, bring it back Frankenstein style and Doomy is what he got. God, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I love it. Oh, good memories of that show <laughs> because that's around the age where I realized that I could masturbate. So it was always like I'd get home from school, mom and dad would be at work, and I would have a tough decision to make. Because like I only had like an hour before mom got home. And it's like, ooh, do I watch the, the one hour block of Beetlejuice, or do I jerk it? <laughs> if only I could combine these two. Oh. Because, oh God, I'd seen so much of the cartoon before I even knew what the movie was. That, that saddens me, the but guy, I get And it. the I movie fucking blew my mind. <laughs> How's, how's what the fuck is why? Why does everybody hate Peter? <laughs> Lee's your friend, Lydia. What are you doing? Okay, sandworms. Yep, yep. Awful. Check, still awful. Check. All right. Where's Doomy? They change. A lot of things are different in the cartoon. <laughs> a lot of things are different. Why aren't they always in Beetlejuice's Afterworld? Like all the time. Lydia goes there to visit him in his house. <laughs> I think there was a Beetlejuice video game based on the cartoon series, oh. wasn't there? I think I had that on I'm, Game Boy. I'm okay with that. I mean, I guess because the, the the NES one wasn't really based off the movie either. It wasn't really based off no, anything. No, it really, yeah. It, it was, was as nonsensical yeah, as right, the cartoon. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, there's phones. Like, you'll know as you're traversing the levels, you'll hear random phone ringing. If yes. you can find it, it'll uncover certain random tiles on the map. Yes, it'll so, reveal something. Because basically, you're. Each level is like the huge fog of war. You're going like a grid style, uncovering a square at a time, trying to find your right. way around. Right, and you can hit the C button at any time to, to check the map, mm-hmm. which I like. I like the I like that system because yeah. it's just it's not a very complicated menu. It's just this button opens the map, and that's it. Yeah, because it's a I can see the same sort of system like in other games, but it's just like doesn't have this absurdist polish to it like this could easily be like a war game yeah no it could right. where you have power-ups and you're just like a soldier going through enemy territory but it's not going to be anywhere near as entertaining or as a dune this game take on it or dune it's yeah true. no i i love the style of this game i really like it really sets it apart i think the concept is really cool but like combined with the character design and just the absurdity, I mm-hmm. think is, is this wonderful mix. I've, I really liked this game. Yeah. I wish I would have played it when I was young. Like Me too. I, I, I mean, I, I liked it now. I can appreciate it. But man, if I had played it like back in its day, I would have really enjoyed it. This would have been a good like game to play, a good summer game. Because like... It's sort of, I mean, yeah, it gets harder, but it's somewhat relaxing, like pl- walking through, trying to find a level, trying to understand things, putting together what presents might be what presents. Right. And those change each time you play. Yeah. Like the boxes, like, will look different. So yeah. it's like you can't memorize, oh, exactly well, the white spotted are. box yeah. opens a gateway. The one that looks like a six pack of beer. Uh-huh, okay. Uh huh. And oh, I love it. The soundtrack. 
Yeah, which I, wanna... I think people really, really heavily praise. Yeah, we need to talk about the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. What did What did you think? Uh, it didn't get boring or repetitive to me. Which so that's because it's not like uh, it's not like battle music. It's not like it's good. It's good, solid background music, but it's varied enough and has a good enough of a beat that you don't get sick of it. You'll kind of go along with it. So I, I enjoyed it. I did too. I think um, that it, I read that it was inspired by Herbie Hancock and the Headhunters. And man. I've heard of that. Holy shit. Like that was my, one of my favorite albums when I was a senior in high school. Um, and that, like, as soon as I read that, uh, I, because I read that before I played the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as I read that, I could not wait to to play the game yeah. to see if that's true. Uh, and it one hundred percent definitely is. It. The only thing that bothered me is that it was on a Sega Genesis. Like I really liked the music, but like I couldn't help but but be like, oh, I want to hear this on a Super Nintendo or uh, like yeah. actual music. You know, like instead of the bleeps and bloops, like this music, I feel like deserves to be like on a cd like like a playstation style like pop the cd yeah. and, and hear actual real music instead of the um the 16-bit sound the I, tinny genesis it is yeah. i mean we've talked about the gen we've dogged on the genesis sound a lot and i think it's well deserved uh, and like a game like this really really bothers me because it's like uh, man i want to hear this and uh, at least a little bit higher fidelity than mm-hmm. than than this i feel like it deserves it yeah did you uh mess around with the uh, uh, jam out no there is when you start a game you choose whether you want to do um, the fixed version of the game, which I assume all the spaceship parts are in the same spot each time you play mm-hmm. it. I don't know because I did random. Uh, so you choose fixed, random. There's another option called jam out. And when you hit jam out, you pick one of the tracks from the game, one of the musical tracks, mm-hmm. and then chrono trigger prehistoric dance party style. <laughs> it's just a game mode where you hit a button and... And Toe Jam or Earl <laughs> will do a dance move and make a sound effect. Mm. And that and it's a, like, that could be a free mobile game, like, right yeah. now. Like, the, when I, I was like, uh, yes, I would like that on my phone right now, please. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sad that they put so much emphasis on the music and it's on the Genesis. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I would, I would love to hear it. If it happened to be good, okay, fine. But, like, when they went out of their way to do it and then, yeah. And it's rare that I like look up the a composer's name, but this was John Baker. The name of the composer was John mm-hmm. Baker. I wanted to make a note of that because I I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Um, and it fits the style of the game. It fits the absurdity. Um, it fits the character design. I mean, it, it's it's wonderful. I, I really love it. I know for the um, the second Toe Jam and Earl game, uh, Sega had the soundtrack. Uh, recorded by um, a jazz funk band and and released mm. the CD. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there are any great covers out there from the first game, but I will look. So for we them. should, yeah, we should definitely add this. The sequel, I don't believe, is on the list. No, it's not. So I, I don't want to play it. To it. I, no? I don't want to. Mm. Do you know about it? Have you looked into I've it? I heard it's bad. I know it's a fucking platformer. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to do that. I heard it's like an Earthworm Jim style, like. I like I love Earthworm Jim, yeah. and there's and I'll defend Earthworm Jim for fucking ever. Like I think Earthworm Jim did amazing things for sprite animation. It's one of the first games. It's one of the first shooters I feel like on a console where you could fire more than four directions. Like I mean, you had clockwise. Uh, you had the full range of the clock to fire. I fucking love that game. There's no way the Toe Jam and Earl 2, like, <laughs> everything I've seen, read about, it just looks so counter to the uh, original game. And I know that, mm-hmm. like, I read uh, an interview with the creators where they were talking about how um, they wanted to do a legitimate sequel to mm-hmm. Toe Jam and Earl. They wanted to do, they were working on something very similar to the original game. And the suits at, so, at uh, Sega, uh, we're getting uncomfortable with it uh, because they thought that it was even, I, I guess it's because of the sales of Toe Jam and Earl. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it did pretty well because um, I know it released right before Christmas. I think it came out in November. 
but they wanted a platformer, essentially, is what it boiled Let's down play to. it safe. Platformers Ex- are safer. Exactly. Platformers are hot. So Let's not do a survival play. horror game. Let's do an action game. Exactly. Like, yeah. That kind of deal. And that's kind of what we wound up with is a not so great. Uh, sequel yeah. to Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, we'll pl- let's play it. Sure, <laughs> 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 I, it's just gonna break my heart. That's why I don't want to do it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll play it and tell you about it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So yeah, I didn't get to beat it either because I think it would take getting that good, like getting knowing the power ups and spending enough money to pay for your identification, and then holding on to your power ups so you get to the higher levels where there are multiple chicken parties. Yeah, roaming around. Yeah, like so. It's it to a certain extent. Once you get used to it, then the resource management part kind of kicks in. I think that I could beat this game because after I played it, I uh, I then went to Game Facts and was like, "What's the deal? Like, what what are all these elements to the game uh, that I'm not familiar with? Like, there's a ranking system in this game. Mm-hmm. Did you notice yep. that? Yep. Uh, where you start out, I think as, Earl is a peanut. As Earl is uh, a weenie. You start out as a wiener. <laughs> Uh, and then you go to Doofus, Poindexter, Peanut, Dude, Bro, Honey, Ratmaster, and then the last rank, the final rank is Funk Lord. So what happens mm-hmm. when you reach these different ranks, I had no I idea. Think I think, is it Homie or is it Honey? I, man, Homie would make more sense, yeah. but Honey is what it said on Game Facts. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I I was reading, I was like, okay, I noticed those ranks as I was playing the game, but I had no idea what it was doing. Yeah. Every time you reach a new rank, your life bar extends. So you become harder uh, to kill. Okay. So then I was like, okay, well, how do you up your rank? You up your rank by revealing tiles on the map. Okay. Um, and opening presents. So those are the two ways to do it. And for when I learned that information, for some reason, it made me appreciate the game even more because it was like, oh my God. Like there's like there's more there's to, it. to it. Yeah. yeah, there's more to it than just wandering around trying to find these these uh, pieces of the spaceship. Now all of a sudden it's like I have to make decisions where it's like, all right, we're on level one. There's not many enemies. It's very easy here. Let me just explore this whole fucking mm-hmm. level one, explore all of level two and try to rank up early on in the game. Yep. Yep. I think that I could beat this game. And I, I think I think that I might actually try <laughs> to beat this game. <laughs> Uh, because that excites me. I like yeah. that. And that kind of reinvigorated how I felt about it. Um, if anyone does watch the stream, I apologize. I'm super tired when I play it. <laughs> so I'm like yawning and stuff. But that's not indicative of how I felt about the game. Do you have any achievements for it? I do have some achievements for this game. Or do you have any other commentary before we talk, start talking about achievements? I have a few, mm-hmm. if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because of the exploration that's involved in this game or if it's because of the suburbanite enemies. This game reminded me a lot of Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Okay, I can see that. Um, and I think it is a lot has a lot to do with the enemies and the enemy design. And like it does feel like it is... I mean, it's a parody of how... Middle uh, Middle America white people lived in the 90s, I feel like. And I always, I feel like that's very much what Zombies Ate My Neighbors is, mm-hmm. too, which is right in line with, like, Romero's vision, like, for like social commentary in zombie movies. Mm-hmm. So I love that. Uh, and, I, and I really appreciate that, um, that part of the game. Uh, in that they, I feel like when they were designing the game, like, they really thought about it. It wasn't just like a ah, fat blob and spaghetti monster. <laughs> They're going to go collect spaceship parts. Like I really feel like there was some like artistic integrity behind that some of the decisions they made. Yeah. And, and I really like I really appreciate that. Um I think the controls in the game were amazing. Um C button opens and closes the map. B button um, opens and closes your presents, like your list of presents. And the A button either uses a present, confirms a selection, or allows you to sneak. Uh, Because you can sneak by, if you hold down the A button, you can sneak by sleeping enemies. Uh, So there is kind of like the stealth element Mm -hmm. to the game, too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool. Um, Other than that, I think that's all I got. I'm looking through my notes here. I don't see anything else other than um, 
at first I didn't like the idea of the the expanding the map because you kind of have to like go around the edges of the world mm-hmm. in order to find hidden passageways which may or may not lead to your elevator door yeah. that you need to get to. I didn't like that at first um, because I didn't know to do it. So at first, like when I'm first playing the game, I'm like, I'm fucking lost. I don't know. I've explored all of this and I don't see a spaceship part. I don't see a way out of here. And then eventually I discovered, oh, it's essentially a hidden passage yeah. I need to find. Do you feel like this is potentially ranked too low? Potentially, yes. I I feel like so far this is the best Genesis, the best Genesis game, game we played on so far. the list that I've played so far. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Which is how we should feel that way for every game we play on this list. Yeah. But I haven't so far. <laughs> but I mean, this is how I, I hope this continues. I hope this is a trend that continues where we play the next game, which is sort of Vermillion, and uh, we're like, hey, that was so much better than Toe Jam and Earl. <laughs> From what I've looked at so far, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, I do have some achievements, Tyler. Okay. All right. Uh, the first of which is called Quite Clever and Never, We're Together Forever. In order to unlock Quite Clever and Never, We're f- Together Forever, you need to finish the game co-op. Um, what is that from? That is from Tougher Than Leather, which is a Run DMC song. Oh, okay. Uh, that'll be in the show notes. <laughs> um, the I didn't get to play co-op, but one of the things about this game that people praise is how the co-op works. This is one of the first games where it would split screen only when you needed to. Like if Toe uh-huh. Jam and Earl were together on the screen, together forever, they uh, there was no split screen. But the moment they strayed apart from one another, it, the shoot. screen automatically yep. splits horizontally. Yep. And as much as I dislike split screen, like that is, I mean, that's that was the solution that's at the time. That's brilliant, yeah. And uh, absolutely, I don't know any other game that does brilliant. that. I fucking love it. Um, do you do you want to sw- you want to go back and forth? Uh, do let's you have see. an achievement? Uh, my first one is he don't play that, <laughs> and that is I thought it was homie. So getting the homie rank, which I didn't get to, I only read about it. It might be, it might be homie, <laughs> and then you know, Game Facts isn't like uh, an extremely reliable source. <laughs> homie makes more sense than honey because, mm-hmm. uh, as we all know, a honey is a filly, which is a fine lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fresh Prince. I mean, that's Fresh yeah, Prince one hundred and one right there. <laughs> uh, let's see. My second achievement is Blip Blop. You don't stop. And in order to unlock Blip Blop and you don't stop, you need to jam out for twenty four hours. You have Ooh. to you have to dance as Toe Jam or Earl for twenty four hours. <laughs> but let's face it, you can just you can just get one of those drinking bird toys and just put it <laughs> position it right over your A button, and you'll be fine. You'll unlock that in no time. Uh, my second one is Jersey Shore, and that is when you get in the hot tub with the babes. I, You know, I didn't find a hot tub. If you, on level one, if you get rocket shoes and go to the lower left-hand corner, there is a, basically a donut island with a hole in the middle. You fall down there, you go to like level zero, uh, which there's a lemonade stand and then a hot tub with the Hawaiian dancers that are in the hot tub. And nice. You, you get in the hot tub and flirt with them, and they say like, tittle, giggle, and then... Toe Jam and Earl keeps saying like chat, giggle, and like you flirt with them in the hot tub. I fucking love it. I forgot how to forget about the hula dancers that like have this aura of Otto Luke's uh, irresistible dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my third achievement is the dude abides. And in order to unlock the dude abides, you need to achieve the Just rank made Josh Edwards hard. of dude. Yes. <laughs> Josh Edwards, you're welcome for the Big Lebowski reference. Tyler, do you have any more achievements? I do not. I have the name of two. Would you like to help me? Let's do it. The first of which is, of course, Low Hanging Fruit. My name is Earl. <laughs> nice. Nice. I didn't think about it, so it's not that low hanging. <laughs> so I'm thinking in order to unlock that, you like the easy way to go you is beat you the game beat is the Earl. Game is Earl. Yeah. But I think you could also beat the game. Um, you have to be Crab Man. <laughs> <laughs> You got like, yeah, the Sonic and Knuckles that you plug other one into. They also have the Crab Man that you plug into the <laughs> game in, and you can be Crab Man. Uh, we need to invent these. The things. precursor to the B Wolverine button. <laughs> uh, the last one, Tyler, that I have a name for, but I do not have the achievement mm-hmm. for, is Toe Jam and Earl Grey Tea. <laughs> Which sounds like a weird Jeopardy answer mm. or a Wheel of Fortune answer, I mean. Toe Jam and Earl Grey Tea. Uh, that's where you beat the game with uh, Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
as your Niles. <laughs> like yeah, it's where you you <laughs> cosplay as Fraser and Niles playing Toe Jam and Earl. Dude, I wish you were going to Dragon yeah. Con this year if we could throw together a fucking Fraser cosplay like Noah's business. <laughs> See, that'd be good to get like Good Lord. Get, no. <laughs> get his dad's chair, <laughs> put it on wheels, and just have like like turn a hover around into the dad's chair and just cosplay as their dad. Oh man. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Nance is a dead ringer for David Hyde Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> Get like a whole thing going where you're a whole bunch of people and Frasier and you do like a whole like surrealist skit where you're you and all your friends are cosplaying Frasier in the food court as him, oh my God. him has a bumbling party where he keeps oh making my God. It's some, some minor mistake oh in cosplay. Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> we have to do this. <laughs> we could throw this together in no time. It's true. <laughs> Fat Boy Nation, help our Frasier Surrealist Art Show. Oh my god, what if we don't break character the entire time? We do all the things that we normally would do, but we do it in character. <laughs> we make observations that Frasier would make. Oh man. So yeah, so somebody, the lucky person is Frederick, because they can just have fun, and then everyone else is like, Frasier and Niles are like... Oh, or Roz. Was this was important, or Lilith. <laughs> 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 Okay, so we know Nicole is Lilith. Right? So know- <laughs> I was right with her, too. She's nicer than Lilith. But Lilith is the, definitely the Dark Dickinson of the Frasier yep. crew. Oh, my God. It could be early early Daphne to where she's very mm. much into like the mind reading and right. the being psychic. <laughs> was there a Frasier video game? Did, oh, did we find I've, that? I've seen the fe- like the spoof fan art right. for the Frasier <laughs> SNES cards. <laughs> I think that's what I'm thinking of, which totally fooled me when I saw it. <laughs> oh, Tyler. Yes, yeah, safe. I've had fun today, man. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. have. I don't know if you could tell. We ate a Whopperito. Ate, we had our passport to flavor. <laughs> I got stamps in my passport. They're going to laugh at me the next time I go out of the country. <laughs> um... But before we close things out, I have a couple questions for you. Are you, are you ready for that? Mm, please, please. Tyler, if you were to give this game a beard that mm. sums up how you feel about it, what kind of beard would you rate it? I would have to give it the goatee of one iced tea. Oh, yeah. okay. Any particular reason iced tea over anybody else? Cool and in the 90s and... I get it. Funky and hip. <laughs> right. Funk, you know, I'm, I'm okay. funky... <laughs> Funky and hip with the iced tea. <laughs> right, cousin? <laughs> <laughs> we are iced tea. We are funky and hip. Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what kind of glasses would you give it? The black frame glasses of one Garth Algar. Garth Algar? Par- I'm not, party, that- on, party on, Wayne. Oh, that Garth. Yeah. I'm, shame on me. And- <laughs> I was like... What th- what third rate Star Wars fiction character did you fucking pull out of Wikip- Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah, all the all the nineties that is that is Garth B. Abraham Lincoln. Shame on me, man, Foxy Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, would you like to have dinner? I'd like to have dinner every <laughs> night. <laughs> Let's go. Go where? I'm low on gas, and you need a coat. <laughs> Oh man, we need to do we need to do Wayne's World the movie oh, and the game. Oh, the game's so bad. Yeah, yeah. It's like heartbreaking. SNE- for the one for NES and SNES. Oh, I didn't know there were two releases. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Patreon <laughs> episode or we're going to subject everybody to it. Mm, I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. All right. Cuz I think the next Patreon, I think we should do combo of Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I oh, mean, we got to watch two and compare them. Okay. Well, see, to to really grasp how awful Mortal Kombat Annihilation is. <laughs> I thought is, you were going to like to really grasp the narrative of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> you really need to watch the first one like four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, just, yeah, you just need to watch and just the, the character portrayal of Goro is so. Now look at nuanced. his face. Now look at his face when he crunches Johnny Cage's glasses. <laughs> And I had a moment there where I was like, oh my God, did I just say Johnny Cash? (laughs) (laughs) I also like that game, GD Code, when you're playing Mortal Kombat. Oh, man. The big head Johnny Cash mode. (laughs) (laughs) Because instead of an uppercut, he pulls out a guitar and just... (laughs) (laughs) Elka bongs it. (laughs) 
Tyler. So I'm just thinking about like yeah, a I ring don't... of fire fatality. <laughs> 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 Uh, Tyler. Yes, sir. I wonder how much this game is on Amazon. If you were to buy Toe Jam mm. and Earl right now, used on Amazon, how much do you think you would pay for? Sales were bad initially, and then got better. So I imagine it's not like all over the place. I'll say fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Respectable guess, Tyler. Actual retail value: Toe Jam and Earl used for the Sega Genesis on Amazon at the time of this recording is $35. Ooh. $35 game. All right. That's that is, a lot more rare than I expected. And it's more than I honestly would have expected, too. Yeah. It's part of the... You can play it on Steam. It's in the Sega Classics pack. Awesome. Tyler, I lied. I have one more question. <laughs> okay. I want to know where are they now. I would like to know where is... Jason Voorhees. Jason Voorhees. <laughs> He's in <the> Lake Crystal. <laughs> Uh, where is Johnson Forsanger Productions? Johnson Forsanger. Vor, 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 Vorsanger. Vorsanger. Maybe it's Vorsanger. Vorsanger. I shouldn't be making fun of this man's name because I do respect his, I do respect <laughs> what he has done. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, if their sequel to their game shit the bed because of creative control, I'm going to assume that they are defunct because after that second one crashed... That the team was let go or annexed or something like that. So I'm going to just assume they're gone. Okay. I feel like that's a pretty safe guess for mm-hmm. most of these. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyler, you are correct. Yeah. You are correct. Um, th- they uh, became defunct as of 2003. Uh, they, before then, changed their name to Toe Jam and Earl Productions Incorporated. Mm. They, ride that cash cow. <laughs> they still have a website that's up. Yes, they do. That's are uh, they the one doing the Kickstarter? Um, well, one of them is, from what I understand. Um, well, I'll get into that, I guess, if if you want to talk about the Kickstarter a little bit. Um, they disbanded. One of them uh, went to uh, Electronic Arts. Um, and let's see. One of them sold their soul. Yes. The website, by the way, is tjande.com if you want to go check it out. The site is actually up for the Xbox release, the third Toe Jam and Earl, the one that came out on the Xbox. Oh, Uh, didn't know that. It's fucking hilarious. (laughs) So everybody fucking go there now. It's like, it's, it's like, oh yeah, wow. Websites did exist when the Xbox was out. (laughs) Uh, the Kickstarter, um, which looks a lot like Don't Starve. Um, let's see that. I can't remember the name of it. It was founded by it was founded by one of the two uh, original developers. Oh, okay, that's good. Who got all of the um, all the rights to the characters and stuff like that after they disbanded? Oh. So that's good. That like yeah. the creator, at least half of the creators, have the rights as opposed to like Sega, because yeah. that would fucking suck. Yeah. Because if Sega had the rights, like we would never see Toe Jam and Earl again. Nope. Just wouldn't fucking happen. It'd be like Yukon Laylee and all that kind of stuff where it's like, yeah. it's close. Yeah, absolutely. B- Bone Jam and Merle. Bone Jam and Merle. <laughs> uh, it's also a Walking Dead tie-in. <laughs> we're, going, we're going for that Venn diagram, which is very wide. It's a very wide section of Toe Jam and Earl players who also like The Walking Dead. Um, I, actually, I don't have... We are Bone Jam and Merle. We're a cover band for the Toe Jam and Earl soundtrack. Ooh, yeah. Bone Jam and Merle. Actually, that sounds like a local bluegrass band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough information in front of me to talk about the Kickstarter um, well enough, so I'll uh, we'll have yeah. a link on the show notes if yeah. you if you like or want to check that out. The Kickstarter's over, so um, uh, you can't donate to it still, but hopefully you can buy the game when it comes out. Yeah, it looks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have time for any calls or we're about a time? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, let's call it. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening. You find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Um, what are we going to do next? Oh, you wanted to figure that out. Let's figure that out. Okay. All right. I have some options. Okay. Uh, we've been talking about Inside for a while because that was gifted to us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we have mentioned Road Rash in the past, mm-hmm. and we are on a Genesis kick. I don't know if maybe we want to save Road Rash for when we get to a game on Digital Trends list that we've already played. Um, we've talked about Jurassic Park for the Genesis, where you can play mm-hmm. as the Raptor, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Um, weirdly enough, Tyler, I don't think Aladdin for the Genesis is on Digital Trends list. 
Is it? Not? I don't think mm. that it is. I might be completely I lying. I don't remember. Which is really weird to me because I just found out like today that that was like I think the third or fourth top selling Sega Genesis yeah. game. Feels weird to me that it's not on the list. So mm. there's some options. Um, we also bought a bunch of stuff on the last Steam sale. That's true. So there's options there too. So all calls again. Okay. So definitely all <laughs> calls. <laughs> Hmm, I don't know. What are, what are those sounds good? What are you leaning toward? Um, I want to do Road Rash. Okay. Are you cool with that? Yep. I don't know which Road Rash. Is that okay? Yep. Because um, I can't remember which one I like the best. I think because three I felt like kind of got out of control a little bit. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. So next episode we'll do a Road Rash? Yep. All sounds right. good to okay. me. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll send you a text to okay. let you know which one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, we'll be doing that, doing our Road at Road Rash. Yeah, a uh, road rash. A uh, road rash. So um, if you want to help us out, you can review us on several different things. iTunes, Absolutely. our shirt on Amazon, yes. on Stitcher, whatever. Uh, you can also leave us messages on Facebook, Twitter. Just if there's something you want us to do, if there's a game you want us to play, a host for an episode of Patreon request, just get in touch with us yes. somehow. And we promise, whatever you leave us, we will get to that eventually. eventually. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back. In the meantime, you can always find us at tadpog.com. That's where the show notes live. Uh, do you want to find out more about the uh, new Toe Jam and Earl game that ha- that was kickstarted? Do you want to know more about the Rocco's Modern Life movie that's coming out? Uh, you can find all of that on Google, or you can go to tadpog.com, and we'll have links there as well. Uh, we're the poor man's Google. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. our new tagline in <laughs> iTunes. Um, also, I haven't said this in a while. Uh, and I have noticed that our uh, our social media has hurt recently, and I don't know if it's because I've been glossing over this, but we are on Facebook. You can find us on facebook.com slash Tadpog. There's a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much to everybody listening who has liked us on Facebook. Yeah. I really do mean that mm-hmm. because we do use that as a measure of our success <laughs> and that bar has not moved in probably a year. <laughs> yeah, because we, we average about 100 likes a year and we're a little behind because at the end of this year, we should, if we're on track, still at 400 likes. It I is, think right now we're like four. It is not three forty nine, three fifty. We're like three forty nine, yeah. something like that. Yeah, a little so, bit behind. I'm not trying. I, look, I'm putting the blame fully on myself because the last outros I've given have been like, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, find us there. I feel like I, I haven't been putting enough import on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is, I, I'm not lying when I say there's a lot of cool people. Well, I guess I wonder if it's like, cause Facebook is for families now. Right. And Tadpog, and we're like your Tadpog's shameful thing you listen families. to in the closet. Tadpog's for families. You must have. Manson add, families. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but those are still families. It's true. <laughs> they also have eyes, families, sure. <laughs> but yes, families nonetheless. So what are people are just afraid to like us on Facebook? Because then grandma will be like, what's this Tadpog that he likes? It can't. It has, surely it has Maybe nothing. Maybe I'll listen so we can have a good conversation <laughs> about it. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the quality of our product. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> But seriously, if you're on Facebook and you haven't liked us yet, I I, re- I strongly urge you to like the page because – and I swear every episode we post, we have great comments from listeners. Mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. that you would enjoy reading those and maybe joining in on the conversation. Uh, in the same vein, we're also on Twitter. You can find us. Uh, we are at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize – Guys, I have not said this in a long time, so I need to say it. Thank you so much for retweeting us, especially our episode announcements, because that helps spread the word. Uh, and I feel like I I am failing as a co-host in uh, promoting the show. So if you could do me a solid, I would really appreciate it if you'd retweet us. Um, yeah. it, it would honestly really help. If you don't want to do either of those things, I would urge you to um, tell a friend. Honestly, tell mm-hmm. a friend about it. Um, and they tell two friends. And they, and they tell, tell two, two friends. friends. And then all of a sudden, we've all got a condo in Spain. <laughs> um, but, and okay, so I've been begging a lot. I'm sure you picked up on that. Mm-hmm. I've been begging a whole mm-hmm. lot. I've been busking, I believe. Uh, I, I want to beg for a few more things. Uh, 
if you would like to give us money, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you just have like any extra just laying around, you, you just, don't know what to do with it. You got look at the end of every month when you balance your your checking account, are you like, God damn it, I got a fucking extra dollar in here again. <laughs> What am I going to do with this pesky dollar? I tell you what, I have mm-hmm. the perfect solution for you. Go to patreon.com slash Tadpog mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and just type in $1 uh, pledge, and then you're going to get access to all the bonus episodes mm-hmm. that we've already mm-hmm. recorded. We do one a month, and as long as, you're con- as long as you continue to donate, you're going to get all the bonus episodes in the future. It's a really mm-hmm. good thing that makes us feel good. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> And that actually valid that validates our existences. Very much. Yes, we very both told much. our mothers that. Um, They're very concerned. They are super, super <laughs> concerned about our <laughs> mental health. <laughs> um, so I want to thank uh, everybody who already donates uh, on there. Uh, specifically, uh, I'd like to thank Exalted Lord Micah Perdue, uh, a.k.a. Micah Perdue, mm-hmm. uh, who recently upped his pledge uh, by a penny. He is still riding the penny train Mm -hmm. so micah thank you very much we appreciate it uh if you'd like to call us that douglas from better mate is he he riding the penny train eerily silent oh eerily silent oh i don't know what we did to make doug mad (laughs) damn (laughs) but we did something and we need to make it up to him (laughs) um maybe all these maybe i know it's gonna get him back Whopperito. I know that's, I know that's gonna get done. We back ate for one. Us. <laughs> Give us two pennies. Uh, hey, do you want to call much, us? How much red tape for you to eat a Whopperito? Two cents. Two cents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you realize those are like uh, in the range of five dollars, right? I don't care. Two cents. <laughs> Not a big deal. Uh, if you want to call us, you can do that. Um, sometimes we take calls. And voicemails, uh, give us a ring at 270-883-2555. If you send a text, I want to reassure you that like I normally say, I promise that I will fuck it up. Uh, If you want to send us something, food to try, game that you want to get expired to the list, send anything to Tadpog Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. I know we've got something coming. Mm-hmm. From Mike H. I know something's yes. coming. Probably, f- probably, hopefully, two more body pillows that <laughs> yep. we can take to the Sears. So we can have our, our Sears origin. Yeah. Uh, we have an Instagram. That's Tadpog underscore podcast on Instagram. We're on Twitch, like we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Just search for Tadpog. We've got shirts, like we mentioned earlier. Uh-huh, yep. If you want a shirt, type Tadpog into Amazon. and then um, We've I'd- worked thoroughly. I read The Art of the Deal. By Donald Trump, yes. and then called up Jeff Bezos, yeah. and we went at it for just, hours. Just hashed it out. Yeah, it wasn't easy, but we're on there. It's all that Shark Tank you watch, I feel like, <laughs> really got you through. God, Ryan watches that fucking Shark Tank. <laughs> Ryan, you go in Ryan's house, and TV is either A, basketball, or Shark Tank. That's it. That's it. That's fine. That's you, be, be like basketball and Shark Tank. That's fine. You, well, I mean, you walk into my house, it is... 100% children's programming. That's what's going to be on the mm, television. Yeah. <laughs> now I get that. Let's see. Because I gave up on parenting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good parent to me. It'll be a good parent to my son. That's right. Well, well, Henry, we had a good year yeah. and a half run. It's time for old Uncle TV to take care of you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Our theme song is Moves by Sycamore Drive. Look at that track. You can find the show notes at tadpog.com. So for once, I won't really rush through it and trip over myself. No, I love it. How do you want to close this out, Dave? Um, I would like to close it out as funky rappers from outer space, but we have to do it without getting racist. Okay. Aha, uh-huh, that's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> like, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so, so bust out your best vanilla ice impression. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, tropical. <laughs> Capricorn. <laughs> My name is Tyler, and I'm here, here to, to say, say I love <laughs> video games in a major way. <laughs>having me do something I didn't know what it was I'm I'm defending the black hole from robots that are trying to kill Stephen Hawking